Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Wednesday the 20th of January 2021 and we're making an assessment of what it means when former Fed Chair Janet Yellen becomes Treasury Secretary likely later this week. Now, yesterday we produced a video entitled Gold and Silver and Markets Pre-Inauguration, where we highlighted that apart from Bitcoin, which once again soared really, equity markets and precious metal prices, though up, were relatively modest in their ascension. We talked briefly about Biden's new proposed Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, and the importance of China on the US and global economy. Interestingly, earlier in the week, we produced a video entitled China to Outgrow the United States by 2028. And if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to that, we seriously suggest that you do, because it's quite revealing as to what forecasters are actually saying about China. And we've placed links to the pre-inauguration video and the China video below. Now today we want to concentrate on Biden's proposed Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, who attended her confirmation hearing yesterday for consideration of her nomination. The word on the street is that she is likely to be accepted tomorrow. Now at the hearing, lawmakers were urged to, quote, act big, unquote, to save the economy and worry about the debt later. She pointed out, that the benefits of a large stimulus package to counter the coronavirus pandemic were greater than the expenses of a higher debt burden. She also called for corporations and the wealthy to pay their fair share. Now clearly this small segment alone tells us the initial direction of the proposed Biden administration. Much more borrowing, spending and wipe up the after-effects later. Also, clearly, some raising of taxes, presumably on businesses and the wealthy. Now, of course, she has to get this through Congress, ultimately, but we can see the intended direction. This, to us, is obviously a prelude to MMT, Modern Monetary Theory, upon which we've produced a number of videos where you essentially, this is a little simplistic, but you essentially spend your way out of recession and print whatever is necessary to cover that spending. It's then envisaged that the growth in the economy will enable that economy not only to recover, but to pay back that borrowing. Now, what she is suggesting may not be a full-blown version of this, but we think it's the beginning. Now, Shanil Ramji, Senior Investment Manager at Pictet Asset Management, told Reuters yesterday, quote, They realise that there is some limits to what monetary policy can do to effect change in the real economy. The Fed will continue buying bonds issued by the US Treasury in order to fund the fiscal programmes, unquote. Now, the reaction to Yellen's statement or comments was a positive one for equity markets, where the Dow yesterday closed up 116 points at 30,930. The S&P 500 closed up 30 points at 3,798. And the Nasdaq closed up 198 points at 13,197. Now, the dollar fell slightly. When we produced yesterday's video, the index was down 0.26 at 90.49. This morning, it's down slightly further again, and the dollar index stands at 90.44. Now, as reported yesterday, oil prices rose, and overnight we've seen Asia-Pacific markets broadly up by around 1%, and this morning, UK and European markets are up on average half a percent. Now, going back to Janet Yellen, 
in terms of context, she served as the Fed Chair between 2014 and 2018 and was the first woman to hold that job. She was, many will be surprised, the Vice Chair between 2010 and 2014 and was appointed and served as a governor as way back as 1994 to 1997. So her time with the Fed was 94 to 97 and 2010 to 2018. She chaired the Council of Economic Advisers under President Clinton from 97 to 99 and was also president of the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco from 2004 to 2010. So she is well immersed within the banking and financial community and is generally seen as a modern Keynesian economist. We're not sure she would admit this, but we believe her to be perhaps a mild supporter at least of MMT, an economic theory which, quite frankly, cannot necessarily be proven wrong or right until it's reached the stage where there's no going back on no point of return. Now we found the following article about her philosophy on Investopedia. Let's just read you a small excerpt. Like her predecessor, Yellen was a staunch dove. Much of the research she performed as an academic economist focused on employment. She and her husband George Akerlof are both Keynesian economists who believe that economic markets are fundamentally flawed and need governmental regulation to function correctly. They both created economic models showing how firms seeking to maximize profits would pay higher than minimum wages. This model was a rebuttal to conservatives such as Robert Lucas, who mandated that flexible wages and prices would allow the economy to revert to form more easily after market upheavals. These models helped to form the foundation of the new Keynesian philosophy. Unquote. Now our additional research on Janet Yellen bears this out. So why are we focusing on her right now? Well, there is no doubt she is friendly to the Fed and so there is likely to be considerable cooperation between the United States Treasury and the Fed and arguably, therefore, between the President and the Fed, where there is supposed to be some distance. Unlike the previous administration, where we knew there was considerable conflict and President Trump had to make veiled threats to Jerome Powell, the Fed Chair. Now, talking of Jerome Powell, he's already made it very clear that he's done almost all that he can to bail out the economy, and the Treasury has to do its bit. And Yellen will probably adhere to that call. So we can expect to see, at least in the early part of the administration, if not the whole part of the administration, more spending, more borrowing, plus higher taxation. Now we're not going to comment on whether that will be good or bad, simply because it all depends upon what the money is spent on, will it be income-bearing assets or infrastructure, how much is borrowed, and who is taxed, and how much. So until we know those answers, it's difficult to tell. We should also not assume that more borrowing or money printing will necessarily result in an abrupt fall in the value of the US dollar, because again it depends upon what the money is spent on, how the US compares proportionately to other countries in its increasing indebtedness and how well and quickly the economy recovers, if it does. Now that said, it would not be unreasonable to assume that in time the purchasing power of the dollar will fall and eventually inflation will set in. It is at this stage we can see gold and silver prices really start to rise again. They may very well do so over the next couple of months in any case in anticipation but for us the next three years is where we see the greatest increases again depending upon how the US and global economy responds anyway that's it for now with only four plus hours to go for Joe Biden's inauguration gold is currently standing at $1,854 
That's up $15 from the video we produced yesterday and $27 higher than Friday's close. And silver stands at $25.43, $0.27 higher than the video we produced yesterday and $0.63 cents higher than Friday's close. So what do you think? Please share your thoughts. They are all read. They might not all be answered directly, but they certainly are all read. And meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Not forgetting to press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.